Welcome in to another episode of Rubberneckers, episode 69, and how appropriate because this is women must, Women's Month, Women's Month, Women's History Month, something about broads. Anyhow, and what I got to say is the best women are now men. With me, Da-da. I have my co-host, Grape Ape, and for I, I'm excited about tonight. I was a little nervous beforehand. We have Mike from the Wheelbarrow Full of Dicks podcast, and I thought this was the first time we talked, but it's not. You told me many uh, elevator stories, John. I didn't know who uh, you were at the time, I guess. I, I was, I just, I sat there and, and I just, I had my hand over my mouth like, my God, this, this stallion could go for hours. He, he's breaking my <laughs> balls. He is breaking my balls. You called into the show once too, right? WFOD, you called the hotline? Oh, I called the hotline, yeah. Yeah, I did. That's right. I did. I forgot. I did call into yeah. the show one time. So I'm going to pull the curtain back for a moment. The truth is, is sometimes you guys get to chatting in our private chats Mm -hmm. and text is a funny thing because it has no emotion. You text back and forth and you just kind of put your own attitude on it. And what's funny is when you guys speak to each other live, I'm sure you would have a lot of fun, but you guys seem to butt cocks a lot (laughs) in the text threads. We've had our moments. moments. I've stormed out of his discord, never been back. (laughs) Yeah, you're like a couple of old roosters just walking around, and you see, hey, 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 fuck you. So Jody, how- it generally, I, I'm having a blast. Yeah, I know that, but yeah. he doesn't. Well, I, I, <laughs> no, he probably does. He does now, but there's only been a couple of moments where I think both of you guys are just kind of like, "Is this guy fucking serious?" Yeah, I'm. I'm a curmudgeon. I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm a curmudgeon. But I'm. I'm learning. I'm learning. So, Mike, let me ask you this: uh, How long have you been doing We're a Barrel Full of Dicks as a podcast? Mm-hmm. We started in 2010. Wow. Crazy, um, right? Yeah. No, it was, it was pretty bad for a while. It's still not great. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we, we try harder now, I think. Yeah. Yes. Well, we got mic stands. <laughs> you got- you've been the concurrent. You've been the alpha mic for all the shows, though. Like, you're the the recurring character for since day one. Oh, yeah. One. No, if I wasn't here, it, it wouldn't get done. Like, right. if I died, the show's over. Same but you've here. been through a couple of co-hosts. I've been through at least three people, I think, on the show that have come and gone over the years. So it's just, it's fun. I enjoy your program a lot. Yeah, I've been through seven co-hosts just on this show alone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I think I've got a body count now, too. Like, at least three or four. Yeah. Damn. Uh, so if you could describe, give me your elevator pitch of Wheelbarrow Full of Dicks. Like, if you were going to tell me what it, the show was about. Uh. It, it's similar to this, but instead of John, it's me. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, it, it, there is there is no like niche. It's just kind of hey, this is the thing we're talking about this week, which is probably we probably should have a niche. What should our niche be like? Well, I kind of uh, think you're more movies, games. Comic books, superheroes. Yeah, yeah, those things. Entertainment, like an observational entertainment podcast. Sure, yeah. We, I think, do everything in our power to be canceled. Like all our topics, <clears throat> someone will say, hey, you can't do that. And I'm like, I just want to do it more. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when Dave wrote the song for the show initially, it's rubberneckers, we watch the world turn, ain't nobody ever learn. And that's always what's stuck with me is it's we bring in topics uh, that we see of things happening in the world and we comment on them. The difference is, is Mike actually will mix in an interview here or there like they've how many interviews do you think you've done? Did you the whole time? Have you been doing that or did you not start that till like halfway through? Uh, Well, Travis, I think started in 2014 and we pretty much started doing it as soon as so yeah about 10 years on doing interviews so yeah and they've they've talked to hundreds of people 
Yeah. Hundreds That's probably of celebrity accurate, people. Yeah. Well, I for me, I think that to do interview somebody else, I mean, I've done that also. Uh, mm-hmm. But then it's it's so hard to find somebody, as you know, and then schedule them, then right. you know try to get them to you know the for them to understand the technology. Most of them can't, so they're either talking into their phone or talking into their computer mic, and you got to deal with that. So finally, I just yeah, said, it's it's hit or miss, right? So I like podcasters now because now I say. Hey, can you record your just your audio on your end? And they go, no. And I'm like, all right, thanks. But then if they say <laughs> yes, I say, hey, why don't we do? Why don't you come on the show? So I, I think that's pretty cool. Hey, listen, um, I want to start. I'm going to ease you in, Mike, like okay. a like a warm bath. I don't want to just throw you into the the hard stuff. So you know a guy named Slim Shady, right? Uh, Mar- Mar- what's his name? Uh, Marshall Mathers. Marshall yeah, Mathers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Eminem. Eminem. That's who it is. He's a rapping fella. He is a rapping fella. Uh, known as Slim Shady. Uh huh. All right. So the Housewives of Potomac, they have a podcast called Reasonably Shady. So they wanted to get a trademark for Reasonably is, Shady. Is the Housewives of Potomac a reality show? It is. Okay. But two of the broads. Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon. Why do you know all these people's names? Uh, Just because it's a news story, or do you? It's a news story, and I have some notes here. So, okay, okay. I I, I have no memory, so I need all the help I can get to pull the. So you don't watch the Housewives of Potomac? To be clear, no, no, I can't. No, my God. So they start. They started to copyright the name. Reasonable, sh- reasonably shady for the simple fact that they wanted to do merch and they wanted the, the trademark and all. But uh, Eminem is now suing them in the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office because he has Slim Shady and Shady already copy yeah, right. trade trademark trademark shady. trademark yeah Slim mm-hmm. Shady. Well, he has he has Shady Records and he has Shade Forty Five on Sirius XM. So right. I guess he does have the market on shade to where if you hear that. Does he? So this is where I, I, I disagree. And this I mean, is it's, where, a, it's a word that exists beyond him. How do you it's trademark shady, a word? It's shady specifically. Like, right? I, I can understand him saying Slim Shady and, and Shady because that's his name. But now just because he says Shady, nobody can use Shady? Nothing? No reason to make shady? money. Do they have a logo or something that looks well, similar to him? Are they trying yes. to trick people into thinking they're him? No. I guess. No. Okay. No, he said it's a, what did he say? A detriment to his brand or some shit was the the liability lawsuit is it's defamation or degradation of his brand. He says the dominant portion of Bryant and Dixon's reasonably shady mark is identical to Mather's shady and slim shady mark. Mather's lawyers claim the confusion is unavoidable between the two marks and that the public could falsely believe that Bryant and Dixon, two ladies, are some way connected or affiliated with Slim Shady. And I say bullshit. I think that the, he, when is the last time he put anything out? And this is the only way you can get his name in the press. Gentlemen. Yeah, he's kind of being a bitch, I think. You you think Eminem's glomming off the uh, the Housewives of Potomac for fame? I'll, let me ask you this. When was the last time you heard him put out anything? Like a year ago. He put out a like his second Greatest Hits collection, I oh, think. Oh, Greatest Hits doesn't count. Yeah, that I'm doesn't about- count. Come on, Mike. Would it have like two extra songs on it? He did put out a couple a few during COVID and shit. He did, I think, two albums. Wasn't yeah. one of them Fuck Trump or something like that? Guys, to be clear, I'm not arguing in favor of Eminem suing them. I mean, sure, he can has try. He, hold on. But I has think he just been doing this the whole time? Has he just been going around suing people for using Shady? Because I know there was a sunglass company called Shady Rays that was around for a little while, and now I don't see them no more. <laughs> so if he has a history of just kind of behind the curtain, just dunking on people who use Shady, then I guess it's just Eminem being Eminem, but... These ladies just happen to be famous, so maybe they can raise more of a stink about it. Yeah. I don't think that imminent domain means what Red thinks it means. Like I think he was making a joke, more like Eminem and oh, Eminem. Eminem domain. Eminem domain. Oh, okay, I get it. No, right, there's something there. There's Hold something on. Up. Hold on, go ahead. Emin, Eminem domain. Eminem domain. Good Ooh, job, Red. Title. 
Song title. <laughs> Good luck with that Episode. one. Eminem in it domain. Eminem in it domain. I like it. I like it a lot. Thanks, Red. Thanks for the title. Uh, Dave, love Dave. John's rap name is Marshmallow Mathers. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. No, it's not. It's Cheesequake with a dollar sign. Yeah, Cheesequake. That's right. That's my rapping name, Cheesequake. I think there's probably more silly lawsuits out there than we actually hear about. And I know if, you if, love them. That's why I put it in there well, for you. Yeah, you, you probably just have a lawyer that you're paying. And so something like uh, they probably brought it to him. Like, hey, you're paying us. Do you want us to just go ahead and sue these broads? He's yeah. Like, we got I a mean, couple yeah, housewives sure. we could sue and make their lives miserable because they have a podcast. What's the worst that could happen? They throw it out? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Are they going to complain about it in public and get people to talk about how much of a dick I am? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is it's a win-win for both of them because who else is talking about the housewives of the Potomac? Who, no. I mean, that's they're not even one of the big five. You got New York, Atlanta, Beverly Hills. No, I've heard of Atlanta. Orange County. Orange County. New York. I said New York. Did you? Atlanta's the one that argued with that cat, right? Mm. No, no, no. The that's arguing uh, with the cat? No, no, no. That's uh, Beverly Hills or Orange uh, County, one of those. Which one flipped yeah. the table over? I think that was Beverly Hills. That's New Jersey. Oh, that that's was, right. Uh, the New Jersey ones. I forgot. How could I forget the New Jersey ones? Yeah, that was Teresa Guidi, Guidi, Chi, Chi. Right. The fuck. No, the one bitch arguing with the cat is the uh, older sister of the famous brunette bitch from Hollywood. Ah. She's mad because she's not as famous. Hmm. Let me sip my fucking wine as I speak on Beverly Hills Housewives. Gentlemen, cheers. There you go. Cheers. Gentlemen, let me ask Mike. How's, how jealous is the wife, Mike? Is she a jealous woman? Not particularly. I, I mean, I, I don't have many people like knocking on my door, so she doesn't really have many opportunities to get jealous. She doesn't feel threatened at all. No. Yeah, I, I don't go places or do things. Um, so, yeah, no, not really. Mrs. How about Mrs. B? Is Mrs. B a, a jealous woman? Extremely. Is she? She don't let me talk to other women. Oh, okay. I so most it. talking that I do to women, especially if it's in a uh, internet sense, is in public in front of other people. So, but you know, and then so he shows I, up on YouTube with his titties out. Right. Yeah. We've also Fair. seen his nutsack. Also. Right. Multiple times. Yes. And then, you, you, well, the, to be honest with you, Mrs. B has a point because you are one charming motherfucker. I get it. All right. So I make pussies uh, wet. Sure. Yes. Well, we have a, here's a, a lady that's kind of jealous, and uh, she might be the most jealous woman I've ever seen before in my life. That was a title that I think they gave her. Yes. Here's most jealous wife in the world. Here she is. Good man, you're not going to let him go, are you? But aren't you going to frighten him off? That's the guy. That's Whoa. the guy right there that she can't let go. This is the one. Ladies, I know. Calm down. Stop trying to get yeah, through your screen. Don't. Don't slide off your chair now, gals. That's right. If you want to take a screenshot and use it later, you know, you know, when you're by yourself. So that's a that's a combination of Jerry Cantrell and the how dare you climate gal. You know, I thought he looked more like the bass player from <laughs> Rush. What's his name? Getty something? Getty Lee? Getty Lee. Doesn't he have like a Getty Lee look to him? He looks like Ichabod Crane. Like I don't have a real person I can even associate to. He's a goofy looking fucking dude. Yeah. So I'm going to assume he doesn't get a lot of offers either. I'm just throwing that out there. All right. So here you go. I don't think I could frighten him off if I tried. I, I don't think there's any danger <laughs> of that happening anytime soon. If I was going to come, I'd have probably gone by now, to be quite honest with you. Mm. And I don't, see, I don't see me going anywhere in the long run. So, so what, what is it then? What, what does she do? That accent is she disgusting, by the way. It's bad. Um, it's Both of them. not anywhere near as bad as you might think, to be honest with you. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay, Fuck we've been in the news for like, lie detectors and things like that, which <laughs> is, is that true? Where have you been? And let me see your phone. Yeah. Would you like to come over here and finger me fanny? <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you think this poor gentleman's been stuck in her ass crack? It's just ugly. It's an ugly accent. Yeah. I can't say much, dude. I live in Arkansas, so I hear the English version of Cogni all the time. Listen, when he stands to her right, they make the number 10. <laughs> if I'm to be quite honest with you, I mean, we've got we got down to the point where we were using it as many times in. Look at that look. Pause it. Hold on. You guys, doesn't she look like. 
<laughs> the bitch from Goonies Grimace? without a hat and makeup. I, I, I don't know what she looks like, but she just shot him a look like, what story are you telling? Boy, what's that you said there? <laughs> There's no, like, neck. It, 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 it just goes shoulders straight to head, yeah. back, like a, like a perfect mountain. She's yeah. like Sam Kinison. She got no neck. No neck. It's just her, it's her posture, I think. I mean, like, she could have a neck, but she doesn't carry herself correctly. Yeah, you gotta sit up straight, honey. Sit up straight. Yeah. Stick that tits out. Tits out, baby. Tits out. So he's about ready to get into a story here. A month, okay. as in within a week, and it's now even less than that. Now, the lie detector that I brought on last time is now sat somewhere in the back of the cupboard in our new is house. Is it before Philip Schofield Museum piece? It is, yeah, because you handled it. <laughs> She gives. She was giving him a lie detector. He would come mm -hmm. home. She would strap his ass to a lie detector. Ask him Let where he's been. What he's been doing. Your dick. That's a great song. Let me smell the front of your drawers. What do they call underwear in in, uh, in knickers? Uh, Let me smell the front of your knickers, and it better not smell like pussy. John, you better settle down, dude. You're getting real close to the edge. <laughs> I didn't even say it because I know better. What's that? Pussy. Yep, no, that's the one. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, if I was him, I would run for the hill. Somebody that jealous. Did you? What happened to the story? Oh, no, that was the story. That was it. That, it basically, the story is that she detector. gives him a lie detector test when he comes home every day. And apparently it stems from they've been together for a few years. And before, I guess, they were exclu exclusive. He apparently was speaking to other women and so ever since then, she's been very skeptical of anywhere and everywhere he takes himself. Well, she so. looks like she's worth the trouble. God damn it. They both do. They really were made for each other, John. They should have some really, really ugly kids someday, I would imagine. They'd probably even out and be fine, right? Just make a normal looking ugly British kid. <laughs> yeah. They fuck together. They make Ron Weasley. That's what happens. <sighs> Poor kid. Mama. All right. So, Jody, you have this next story up here. Uh, yeah. I guess you're trying to help me out here with my diet. You're trying to let me know about different diets that I can, I should try. John, yes. John, did you watch this video or did you just rip it? I ripped it. I saw the very f beginning part of it and I wanted to save it because I wanted to react in real time. Excellent. Mike, you know about the carnivore diet? You heard of that? How it's all the rave now? How these dudes are just eating meat all the time? Just only meat, right? Well, I know there's like extremists like that liver king dude who's like, you got to eat raw livers, but also take steroids. Well, he's a, he's a liar, though, right? Yeah, sure. They find out he was a liar. Yeah, he's a 100 percent. Yeah. Allegedly. Well, I mean, he was still eating livers, I guess, on TV, but also taking steroids to get that jacked. Okay. But people, I, I could probably do this for a day if you just eat meat all day and no carbs, no nothing, just meat and like butter. That's what you eat. Meat. Right. Yeah. Well, sounds, sounds great. Hang on. Here we go. So let's see, let's see where we go. This is a full day eating as a beginner carnivore. First, I start off the day with three pounds of ground. Wait, He's, is that just a stick of butter? That's a that's stick a of butter and Did a pound of ground beef. Bite out of butter like oh, it's there ice it is. cream. Nice. Stick. Why? I, I don't know. That's see, I'm already out. It's the proteins and the oils. Like there's there's something about that that you can have that's also not going. It's good fat, I guess, is the air quote thing. Uh, okay. So, so, he's, so ground beef and a stick of butter for breakfast, right? Yeah, I but, can handle that. Well, why wouldn't you melt it over the... I couldn't eat a stick of butter. I could not take a bite out of a stick of butter. Damn, dude. You'd have to make like eggs or something and throw it over the top just to melt the... If it was liquid yeah. butter, maybe, but a stick is rough. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you want to so melt that. So could you that. do this, John? You good with a breakfast? You could have a hamburger, maybe half a stick of butter. I did this for about a month. Let's continue. It's only 52 seconds. So here we Today go. With three pounds of ground beef and a stick of butter. No Bev, obviously. And that will usually hold me over for about an hour or two. Two? All right. So now what do we have? And then I'll have some steak tartare carnivore sandwich. And we'll have we'll have dessert after breakfast. That's nice. Pause. We'll have a little. A What's a testicle, testicle pop? pop? What is it? So first of all, steak tartare, uh, he's eating raw Philly cheese meat on bread. That seems a little odd. First of all, also, that's that's like a $16 breakfast. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, beef is expensive right now. You have to buy the whole cow and put it in your freezer. Mm -hmm. But I don't so, know what a testicle pop is. I'm a little... Well, it, it looks like... Now, he's not going to give us a, a walkthrough, but from what you're seeing right now, it appears to be 
a testicle, like maybe a bull's testicle, sliced thin. Really? And frozen. Yeah, yeah. It's because bull nuts, I, when you cook them, they're kind of like big kidneys. Like you can cut them and they fry them and do all kinds of shit with them. I've never had it, but I've heard it's okay if you fry it. Yeah, I don't. I've never had uh, mountain oysters is what they used to call them. I've mm-hmm. never had them. I thought there's, there's some part of the animal that I won't eat. The testicles is one of those cuts of meat that I'm not. I could. I like fried pickles. I like fried chicken, chicken livers. Like I could probably choke down a piece. So I've eaten fried oysters. It can't be worse the, the texturally than fried oysters because those things are like squishy snot fried. Dude, I love raw oysters. I- Oh, eat raw. I love both. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying texturally, that's what it is. It's okay. slimy shit in your mouth. Okay. Mike, do you think you could eat a fried testicle? Like if it was cut up like a fritter or something? Like, could I if dared to? Or am I choosing to right. like, for a diet? For you're gonna get a, you're gonna get six pack abs, but you have to eat like fried testicle. Could you do Some that? Fried testicle every day until I have really good abs. Yes. Jody, I'm 40. I don't give a fuck about abs anymore. Okay. So I, this guy I is mean, not I'll, even... I'll eat it. Like, if you tell me it's really good for me and I try it and I like it, I, I don't care. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's gay. Or no, I don't like think that. it's gay. It's I just a lot. Like, eating innards is weird to me. Like, yeah. It's tough. I don't like chitlins so it, either. So look, now we've had a little testicle pop. Right. It's How like much worse yet. could it be? It's not even lunchtime yet. SD pop for sure. Super tasty. And then I'll have lunch at around 1045, which will be. Look at that. Ch- Does this guy ever stop chewing? I hate this fucking guy. So it's chicken. It's chicken. chicken tzatziki tzatziki sauce. sauce. Pause. Go ahead. You can leave it right there. I'll explain. Chicken tzatziki sauce and zucchini. That's a good fucking lunch. I, I could do that. So I far, I'm in, I'm in. Besides the testicle pop. That's a. Mm. I don't know about that. I could do it without the testicle pop. So his midday snack, I thought that this was like a double down KFC chicken sandwich. I thought he had two chicken breasts and a stick of butter that he's eating raw, by the way. And I go, all right, well, now we're stepping off into a whole nother level. So is part of the carnivore diet that you eat way too much food? And also meat. You eat a whole lot of extra meat only all the time. Okay. I'm sorry. I got to go to the chat. Listen, Dave. We don't need to know your sexual habits with your wife. I'm just saying. What does that say, John? It says, I'm not gay. I eat cow pussy. Good drop. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> okay, so now he's supposed to eat this raw chicken breast sandwich. Here's but it. And I'll have my afternoon snack, which is a testicle butter dog. Is that Whoa. raw? That's raw. That's raw chicken. Testicle butter dog. That's a raw testicle, Mike. Fuck this guy. I, I This sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. I, you know something, Mike? I think we can substitute. Instead of John, testicle- I'm fucking fine with the three pounds of hamburger. Me too. In retrospect. I mean, if that's what you want to do, fine. This guy's eating raw shit now. Fuck this guy. Right. Raw, not, not raw shit. Raw testicles. Like, this is a, a bull testicle that they have not even cooked. They've basically skinned it. And he takes this thing and wraps it around a stick of butter, and he's eating it like, oh, my oh. God, this is the best thing. Oh, my so God. So the raw testicles are the buns, and he, he's got yeah. butter meat in the middle? He, he called it a raw testicle butter dog. Oh, there he is. Aww. There it is. All right. So here we go. Which is a testicle butter dog. Super tasty. And then I'll have another afternoon snack, which is a pound of raw ground beef. Another afternoon snack? With a few eggs, and then I'll have pizzle soup for dinner. What's he eating there? And then I'll have a Krabby Patty with a raw testicle bun. And don't... Okay, so he had a a testicle pop after breakfast. And then for lunch, he had two more testicles with some butter. And now for dinner, he's having more testicles. He's having cheese and pickle with a raw... This, You know something? This guy just loves testicles. Can you imagine checking out at the grocery store? Like, I don't even know they sell testicles at my Walmart. But no, you I just don't think they do, the, Jody. This you, guy special ordered the testicles. Yeah. How, how much do they go for by the pound? Like, this dude is going to be spending so much money on testicles. How much could it be? I mean, most of the time, they're going to throw the testicles away. They're like, you know something? We got testicle boy coming in. He's going to need a week's worth. What are we, you know, what are we going to, it's like $1.99 a pound? Some dickhead farmer had just a shitload of testicles, and he tricked these people into thinking it was like this fancy new diet to get rid of all his excess testicles. 
I'm going to back this up. That soup is that piss clam soup with the, the, the clam that has that big, long thing that looks like a dick. Oh, gooey, gooey duck or whatever? Yeah, gooey duck. Yeah, I think that's what that is. So this guy, come on now. Look, look at him. Oh, would you like a bite of my testicle sandwich? The pickles are delightful. Oh, this... I don't like this. Add you with a raw testicle bun. And don't forget the 10 IUGH, 5 grams of test, and 10 grams... Yeah, I'm sorry. He's also got an orange creamsicle, which is orange juice, and I, I guess it got cut off, so yeah. Okay, I did the carniv carnivore diet for a month, and it wasn't bad. Two drawbacks. When you first do it, you have what's called uh, withdrawal. You have uh, carb withdrawal, which is almost like the flu. And then once you get to the other side, your hunger drops and all. The problem is there's no roughage, so you get bound up. And when you do shit, it's like trying to shit a telephone pole. And Man. I was that's enough of that. I was going to say farts just from all the protein. I imagine your farts would be fucking miserable, dude. Well, they are anyhow, so I, I don't know if they... <laughs> no, no, no. You say that. like There's a difference between eating McDonald's, which is garbage, and eating raw testicle meat and egg yolks. Those farts are going to be fucking deadly. So back in the day, I had a friend that was a bodybuilder. And this guy used to eat... I mean, he was huge. And he used to eat so much. So in the morning, he would eat 18 eggs. Uh, he would like fry up or scramble 18 eggs. He would eat 18 eggs. And then he would eat hamburgers. He would eat like this guy did all day long. And he would lift yeah. weights. And he was like a, he was huge. The Rock has to do that. He has to eat like four whole chickens for breakfast or something. Are you saying was because he's dead now, John? Well, was because I don't know where he is anymore. He oh, worked, okay. uh, I used to work on a race car. And he used to come and help on the weekends, work on the race car. And one time, uh, the car next to us hit the wall and tore. And these are small sprint cars, but they still had steel 410 V8 Chevy engines in them. So they tore off the front axle on the front wheel. So they came over with the tow truck. They dropped it off. They didn't know how they were going to get it into the trailer. And this guy walked over and just deadlifted this thing and said, push. And he drug that bitch right into the trailer. I mean, this guy was strong and he was big, too. Damn. So I don't know what happens when you stop eating like that or when you stop. I, I, from what I understand, you shrink back down again. You don't have that big muscle base. You have to keep eating to make that kind of muscle mass. And then do you just deflate? Like you just have a bunch of like weird extra skin or does it rebound? I would imagine that there, if you're pushing that skin out, I would imagine it's just like being fat. Like you just look like a flying squirrel. Yeah. Oh, damn. What? That is one of the downsides to losing weight at the end of the day. Like, even if you do good job, if you're a bigger person and you happen to work your ass off and you lose 100 pounds, it's not like your body just goes back to normal. It's all stretched out like a used sock. Yeah, because... Well, and go ahead, I don't know if it's just because I know people who were fat and got thin, but they always look weird. And I don't know if it's just because I'm used to them being fat or if they look weird. Like Al Roker. Jody, yeah. he looks weird now, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he yeah, looks, you yeah. see him and you're just like, no, you need to gain the weight back. You, you look like Roseanne a looks weird. Like she's old, but I know how big she used to be. So just as yeah. she's gotten older and kind of deflated, she's all wrankled up, man, like a bloodhound. Well, that's yeah, what Roseanne happened. Barr was the joke for fat. Yes. Like if you wanted to refer to somebody as fat, Roseanne Var Barr was the reference. Yeah, and even when she was in the Roseanne show, she was huge. But then again, so was John Goodman. Yeah. Dan. And he looks weird now, too. That's right. He's the one that lost. He went through the weight loss surgery, and now he's he's lost a lot of weight. But what happens is your skin, there's no place for your skin to go. You yeah. know, you just you get that pussy neck. That's the problem. Yeah, you, you get that chicken that. neck. Yeah, women hate that chicken neck. There was a story in there that I had, John. I don't know if that's going to segue or not, but uh, there's something about tits. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. Where is he? Poor tits guy. <laughs> Poor tits guy. <laughs> Poor tits Bob guy. has a good one in the chat. Now Sean looks like a Funko Pop. <laughs> he does look like a Funko. His so, head looks too big. Yes, yeah, so does Al yeah. Roker. Al Roker Zing. looks like a golf tee. <laughs> he definitely does. That's, all, yeah, that's true. All right. Let me get this story up here. You're right, Beauty. This goes right along with it. Thank you for letting me. I should have been done a better job moving these across. There you go, buddy. I have C-cup man boobs. And they prevent me from finding love. Now, here's a guy 
that I think oh. looks a little bit better. By the neck and the the head, yeah. you can tell he definitely used to be bigger. He lost some weight, but he's got some he's got some flapjack titties, man. Is, is that the that's the nipple underneath, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a well. I would say he's got a, what would you call what are those pancakes called? Those uh, silver dollar nipples. I would think it looks like the leg of a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it looks like a baby leg tucked up under his own arm there. Yeah, but you, there's something you can do with this. In other words, once he loses the weight, if he wants yeah. to, they, they they will remove the skin. So we don't need nipples? Like, no, we don't. Why wouldn't they just hold that up and snip them off? Well, I would imagine, again, especially for a guy. You have some cool-ass scars going across your chest like you had a mastectomy and all they did was cut your tits off? Right. If they cut your nipple off, they can just leave it off. And then what happens if you really are... If you really have a problem because you don't have a nipple, you don't like it, you can always go get one tattooed on. I know yeah. women that have had breast cancer and they've had reconstruction surgery, but they don't have the nipple anymore. So they go and they just get two nipples tattooed. I'm sure him being in the New York Post and like his name being there and you Googling him and that being what comes up is going to help him a lot. Yeah. This shirtless picture of him that he's. Yeah, he needs a makeover. We got to get the girls from. Uh, the housewives. Let's see if there's... So there he is. Yeah, he's a little portly there. How bad does it have to be where you have to f blank out the pictures of your family? So that <laughs> I don't want to be seen with this fat piece of shit. <laughs> I think he could probably find a girlfriend just fine, just maybe not the girlfriends that he wants to find. Well, first thing I would do is, dude, you got to do something with your hair. You need a different hairstyle. All right. I don't know what's going on there. The stuff in the in the front needs to go. Yeah, that looks. Embrace like a, the forehead, Ryan. Yeah, he. I think that's a Floby special right there. Damn, he looks like Kevin Bacon. I think he looks like like Wish dot com Kevin Bacon on the on the skinny when he's skinny. You know who he kind of looks like is Cameron Reedy, which is a reference that no one will get. No, I don't. I got but it. it is true. Yeah. I don't know who that is. No, yeah. you don't need to. It's fine. But he was a, uh, he was 280 pounds. Do you think his titties are stopping him from getting a girlfriend, though? No, no, no. No. No, it's no, personality. Totally... He doesn't have the confidence. Because I think he looks like a charmer to me. I don't, I don't understand. He looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> a, a little, little bit. bit. There's, uh, first of all, he's got to do something with the glasses and the hair. Let's go to the chat. Ladies, what would you do to if this was a guy that you had to make over, what would you do to make this gentleman over? Buy him an apron. All right. First thing you do, maybe he could get uh, Manx, like man spanks that would tuck all your, your titty meat in. He could be a project <laughs> for someone, for sure. Absolutely. So he gets the spank underwear, you pull them up high enough, you can just tuck those titties into his shorts? Yeah. Now, he was 280 pounds, but it doesn't tell you what he is now. I'm looking, I'm, I'm scanning. Uh, significantly less than that. It right. Right like. now, I'm 34, never been married, no kids, no girlfriend. You know something? You missed the first lap. What's going to happen now is you're going to have to find somebody that's divorced and has usually has a kid. Yeah, you're, be a good stepdad. You're going to have to be a good step. I have nothing. Go well, see, here's the problem right there. I got nothing going for me. I bet he owns a lot of guns and porn. I bet if he shows up to some soccer games and does some dishes... A divorcee will love this fucking guy. Lap him right they up. They won't give a shit about his tits. No, not at all. They just want somebody to, to pack their lunch. Hang on, let me get to the chat. What's the, what's the lady say? Is that, do I have anything? Here. He has mis mischievous eyes, John. Y you think? He's got bedroom eyes right now. Yeah. That guy That guy can get a girlfriend. This 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 is stupid. You don't like this? I mean, this whole thing is dumb. This guy can get a girlfriend. Fuck I know that he guy. can get a girlfriend. He's just, he has no game. He needs somebody to teach him how to talk to women. He has no game or he's too picky. One of the two. It has nothing to do with his tits. Nobody knows yeah. he has tits no. until he's well established in a relationship to a point where somebody. Yeah, he's definitely not taking him. his shirt off anywhere that you should be taking your shirt. Like I said, he's the not. shirt on. Yeah. yeah. Swim with your shirt on. If you're not happy about your tits, leave your shirt on. Who gives a fuck? The important parts are when you take your pants off. Listen, as a fat guy, there's one thing I can tell you. That if you go to the fat guy store, they have a shirt that you can put in, you, you tuck into your bathing suit, and it's a, it's a bathing shirt. So you don't have yeah. to. And listen, I don't care. I don't care if anybody sees my man tits. 
I don't care at all. What I do is I wear a shirt for the other people. So they don't, they're not they're not subjected to my oh, man. I think it just draws attention. I learned that pretty quick as a chunky fat kid. And it took a long time because I still would wear like, you know, beaters or wife, you know, right. tank tops and shit like that. But you just draw more attention to yourself when you get in the pool and you're the only asshole with a shirt on. And we know why you've got a shirt on, fatty. Of course. But at least you don't have to see it. It's a difference between a two-piece bathing suit for a woman and a one-piece. That's all. All right. So she's back. The patron saint of the Rubberneckers podcast, Megan Hall. Oh. Megan Hall is the cop that was fired for banging all the other cops during work. Yes. She got them fired, too. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, if someone were to tell you that your wife kind of resembles that gal, would you take that as an insult? (sighs) Somebody posted a picture of him. Him and their wife on Facebook, and I just said, oh, your wife kind of looks a little bit like gangbang cop. Oh. And he kind of took offense to it, I think. Like, oh. hey, I think he, he didn't like that I said that. But I didn't mean it as an insult. Yeah, it's not that she, well, if he doesn't like the looks of gangbang cop, I'm trying to see if I can bring a picture of her. Hang on real quick. She's got, a, she's got an odd look. I think she has a midget face. A midget face? Travis put a good point to it today. He said it's like her face is too small for her head. No, the, the picture that they posted today of her with the dark hair, that doesn't look like the guy's wife. It was just that one picture. Yeah, that this one. one here. That's the picture. You know who she kind of looks like? <laughs> From the stage one pot. Don't you got a little pixie oh, look to her? Okay, oh, a little wow. bit. No? Just a little bit, though. Like in the eyes. There maybe. she is. Look, there, there she is. Officer Hall. Yeah. Megan. It's always a bitch named Megan. <laughs> Good for her. There she's getting her... Um, never mind, I'm going to say it. Now, look, they offered her $10,000 to do a strip club show, and she turned them down. Right. $10,000. She could hold out for more than that. That's They one were night. giving people on Pornhub a million. Like, really fat, ugly people. I, I get that. But now what she's doing right now is she's suing the police department. And the reason that she's suing the police department is because she says now that she's been groomed. She's now been groomed. So she claims that eight officers that she had sex with, and, and uh, I think five the of same, them. Was it at the same time? Well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't it like was they were all together. Of time? It wasn't a gangbang. Okay. okay. It was uh, a train, not a gangbang. There's a difference. Okay. Maybe he thought I was talking about somebody else because I referred to her as gangbang cop. I thought um, they all banged her at the same time. No. I, I should have read more than the headline. Yeah. She says that she's been groomed. <laughs> she was groomed for sexual exploitation now that she's been fired. Mm-hmm. She said that Sergeant Powell, her superior, this is where she might get some money, said he refused to take no for an answer. He continued to demand sex, saying things like, we'll do it tomorrow or... I've done so much with you I've, or for you. I've done so much for you. I've helped you. And, I, uh, you know, I've done so much for you in your personal life. So she feels like she was uh, kind of like Louis C.K. Louis C.K. said, hey, can I jerk off in front of you ladies? And they were like a middle and an opener. And they're like, hey, listen, if he's going to take us on tour with him. Yeah, whatever. Is the check going to clear, motherfucker? Yeah. If that's going to happen, then go ahead, spank away. But then I guess he didn't take them on tour with them, and they were like, he jerked off in front of us. Damn. That's not as bad as Keaton Jones, but it's close. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's an inside joke, John. I guess. I don't understand. I just went along with it. John, you see, Keaton Jones, they put ham down his clothes, and he was a bullied kid. He cried. Okay. He's a little kid that looked like Peyton Manning. You remember this was years ago, John, when the uh, the Avengers were coming out. Said that he would take him. I would like to bring this back because every couple of months, Chris Evans trends. And everybody talks about how great Chris Evans is. Chris Evans is a piece of shit. Jay. Captain America, John. Okay, I know who that is. Fuck I knew that him. guy. Chris Evans told that bullied kid that he'd take him to the Infinity War premiere. And then they told Chris Evans, oh, we found Keaton Jones' mom's Facebook page. And she has pictures with a Confederate flag. Oh, no. So then Chris Evans just didn't take the poor bullied kid to the Infinity uh, Just act like it never happened, John. Acted like it never happened. 
Swept it right under the rug. Never to be spoken of. What's he that supposed to do? That poor bullied kid. He went to school the next day. He says, hey, you fuckers, you bullied me. But I get to go to the Infinity War premiere. <laughs> and then he didn't get to go, John. And it's Chris Evans' fault. His mother's a racist. Fucker. Why is that? That's not his fault, John. Oh, John, it, the pictures were old. It was a different time. How far does the racist kid fall from the racist mother? That's what you have to think about. Listen. Chris Evans has a career. He's going to make millions of dollars a movie. This Boyd kid's probably going to either be drug addicted or commit suicide in a few I years. I hope he shoots up the fucking the eighth rendition of the Infinity War, where the fuck happens when Disney runs all Hollywood in another John, 10 years and just kills don't everybody. Don't you fucking dare defend Chris Evans. <laughs> I'm not defending him. I'm just, un I understand. No, this, this is not something we're going to do, John. Here, listen, Mike. Don't you fucking dare defend Chris Evans. Listen, he tried to take this kid, and then this kid got in trouble, and he was like a booger on Chris Evans' finger. He rolled him around a little bit, and he's like, uh-oh, and he flicked it. He flicked no, that. He used him for the clout. It was the big internet story of the day. Mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, I'm going to take this bullied kid to the premiere. And everybody's like, oh, look, it's Chris Evans. What a good guy. He got bullied, and now he's going to get to go with Captain Falcon America to the movie premiere, dude. You know what would have been funny? And quietly walked away. Would have been Never funny if he, if he would have brought somebody, some other kid, like a bullied kid substitute. And he's like, yeah, here's the bullied kid. And it's not really the bullied kid. It's oh, like a Keaton a Jones stunt double? Just some <laughs> other little retarded looking kid? They put ham down his clothes, John. And poured milk on his head. Damn. They give him a swirly. That's when you know you've been bullied, when you get a swirly. Swirly is like the top one thing of being a, being bullied. I've always been a fat kid. Ain't nobody picking me up to put my head in a toilet. That's true. That's one good thing about being a fat kid. Although they can just grab you by the back of the shirt collar, jam your head in there, and still turn and just still flush it. They don't have to pick you up and sit you in there. Yeah. So, you know. You have I guess I just there. never pissed anybody off that much, John. Hmm. Do you guys know who Alec Murdoff is? Do you know who? No. You don't, okay. So Alec Murdoff. I don't know anything. Yeah, tell me. He's a lawyer out of South Carolina. And this guy is a, you think Chris Evans is a piece of shit. This Alec Murdoff is a real piece of shit. So he was, uh, I'm going to use all the words allegedly right now. He allegedly embezzled a bunch of money from his company. And okay. he was getting in trouble for that. Oh, you know what? OJ was defending him on Twitter today. Atta Hello, boy. Twitter world. Thank you okay, for... Yeah, no, so I do know something about him. So thank you for walking me right in here. So what we have here is we have the juice. Oh, I'm sorry. The juice is here. Oh, wow. Why does he look like... He looks like Mr. McDowell from Coming to America. He's getting old. I thought this was funny because... Well, you'll hear. No, it's called a big hey, Twitter world is me, yours truly. Well, a whole lot of people are asking me what I think about this uh, Alex Murdoch trial. <laughs> I have those I know same glasses. I'm an by expert the way. on it, but uh, <laughs> I got to admit, when he took the stand, a guy who's an habitual liar, I did watch um, um, when the trial first started. Uh, I watched him take the stand, and I uh, thought it was probably a mistake because the guy is an admitted liar, and it's hard for me to think he can be on the stand five, six, seven, eight days uh, without lying. Question is, what did he lie about? Uh, but lying and stealing money is a little different than murder. As I should know, because I cut my wife's head off and stabbed the guy. To <laughs> those glasses are thirteen dollars on Zenny.com, guys. <laughs> Hell yeah! No, <laughs> seriously, those life. are thirteen dollar glasses. He doesn't he know. He has no idea why they're asking him about this murder, because this guy murdered his wife and his kid. I don't even know why people are asking me for my opinion on the murder. It's not that I'm the most famous murderer of all time or anything. So, <laughs> so now he's going to go in like, uh, everybody, who's coming to OJ for legal advice? <laughs> I realized in watching them testify what he was doing. He was just trying to relate to one or two of those jurors that he was a good old boy. He was one of them. Uh, and I'm not sure well, he didn't succeed. In doing that. Hold uh, on. Time out. I am not. Excuse me. Anybody who happens to be a black person who might listen to this show. Do you refer to us as one of them, too? Well, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking that like one of them. One of, what do you mean? Uh, one am of, I one what? of the am I one of the good ones? 
I want to be one of the good ones. Well, I don't know. I don't think any of us are good ones, to be honest with you. We're God all white it. devils. Bleach demons. Bleach. Qualified to, to really say if the guy did it or he didn't do it. Uh, you know, if a juror missed an hour of testimony, they no longer qualified. I've missed days that I haven't watched this. Um, uh, but from what I've seen, do I think it's more likely that he did it? Yes. But more likely equals reasonable doubt. a boy, OJ. Work that reasonable doubt in there. Fuck yeah. He just said, hey, listen, get a glove that's two t- sizes too small. Try to put it on and say, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Where the body at, though? <laughs> Do you think he's ever going to admit to killing? He wrote a book. Well, he wrote a book, If I, If I Committed the Murders. It wasn't him. It was Charlie. He just watched. Charlie, his son? No, Charlie, the fake guy that he made up. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, Charlie. Yeah. There's a rumor out there that it might have been his son that went and did this. But to be honest with you, I think it, he had a CTE rage and uh, basically stabbed her. And that poor guy showed up with the glasses, her yeah, sunglasses. It bad timing. Bad he definitely timing. wasn't fucking her, right? Am I crazy to think, though, that if he was having that kind of CTE rage, quote unquote, in his, what, early 30s? Mm-hmm. Call it somewhere around there, late 20s, early 30s. Mm-hmm. Would he still have it together as, as well as he does now at... 65 years old he's an old fucking man and he's still pretty goddamn uh, on it you know listen before he murdered his wife and that kid that came over to drop off the glasses (laughs) he was basically accepted as a white guy everybody loved juice he was the Hertz guy. Yeah, he was the Hertz guy. You know, he was the Buffalo Bill, the San Francisco. Fun 49. fact, OJ Simpson used to own a whole bunch of public storage locations. He still might. Who he knows? Might. Well, he doesn't own them. Fucking the uh Oh, god damn it. I know it's the father of the kid that got murdered. Is I was gonna he? say the last name, but I fucking I, I can't think it. of it either now. Anybody chat? Anybody in the chat know who this is? Well, Nicole Brown Simpson, right? I know Nicole Brown Simpson was the ex-wife, but I'm trying to think of the the kid that was come over. Ron Goldman? Ron Goldman. Ron Goldman. Bingo. That's the father. Let's try this again. Take two. Yeah, but all those storage units are called Goldman storage units. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think they... I think he... Again, I don't know, but I know anything from that book that he wrote, I think that all went to the Goldmans. He's like... He still owes them like seventy million dollars. He'll die. He'll die before he pays. You them. imagine owing anybody a million dollars, let alone owing one person seventy million dollars? Like that's got to be a weird thing to wake up every morning and just know. I just go to the golf course. I hit yeah. some balls. I go. I have some drinks with the guys. I play a little pinochle, and then I go home. And in between there, I address the Twitter world. Yeah, it's better than prison. Hey, you want to know what I think about the Dilbert guy? (laughs) It's me, yours truly. Let's talk about Dilbert. How come he be talking to that devil dog all the time? Yeah. He says you shouldn't live around black people. Well, I live around white people, and everything seems to be fine here. That's crazy. I think he's right. I think that uh, you, every white guy should move away from the black guy people because where's With all the, the crime exception of that in? one whoopsie yeah. daisy? I've lived around <laughs> white people my whole life and things have gone pretty all right. Well, if, I I did have two whoopsie daisies. I tried to get some of my stuff back that somebody sold, and uh, I got pinched for kidnapping, and I got nine to thirty three years. That was my merchandise, though, that they stole. What kind of world is it when you can't even steal back the shit that's stolen from you? It was my face on the goddamn card. Whose name was on the Heisman Trophy? Wasn't that dude's? It says on there, O.J. Simpson. Now, how can it be I'm stealing a trophy that has my name on it? I may be retarded, but goddammit, I can still spell. Hey, Jody, what do Europeans call underwear? (laughs) You stop it. Not falling for your goddamn tricks. I don't know. He's got another four minutes. Do we want to listen to the rest of this or are we just we done with it? We him? get the gist of it. We could just keep going. We could have done that for another four minutes. 
<laughs> I go. don't think I don't think that you should stab people. That's a bad plan. And if you do, you should probably get a lawyer and stop talking. I thought stabbing was a better way of killing somebody <laughs> than shooting because nobody hears a knife go off. Look, the, the evidence was shoddy. Her blood was in my truck. His blood was on my socks. There was blood on the carpet. Uh, there was a glove that was dropped behind the thing. Uh, the the there was more evidence about this, but the problem was that the cops was racist and they those beat cops Rodney. showed up and said, "I bet a black dude did this." <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Two people been murdered. Where do we find a black guy? Oh, OJ. Let's go to. He the only black guy around. He must have done it. <laughs> I like to. I want to know where OJ's train is going to go because eventually he's going to start losing his mind, and I can't imagine the kind of shit he's going to say then because he will definitely still be on Twitter. Hey, Twitter world, let me just tell you something. I did do it, and I'm going to tell you how I did it. He could do it right now. He could tell everybody how exactly how he did it, where he threw the knife. They could go find the knife, and all, and they still can't do anything to him because he's been he's been uh, he's innocent. There's that double, double indemnity, double indemnity, a double, what the hell is it called? Help me out Je- here, people. Jeopardy? and M&M and uh, Double Jeopardy. Right. What double is Jeopardy, Jeopardy, Alex? Again, if it wasn't for the fact that he killed two people, he would be on NFL Today. He'd be sitting there in his suit talking about the games. Sure. If it, Yeah, if it wasn't for that double murder, just the double things would murder. be going great. Yeah. He'd be Steve Harvey, just like the generation after. God, could you imagine OJ hosting Family Feud? <laughs> I bet he'd kiss all of them like that one guy used to do. Uh, yeah. Dawson, Richard Dawson. Yeah, he'd go out there and kiss every one of them. Top four ways to murder your spouse. Pass or play. <laughs> Top four answers on the board. <laughs> Survey says, bing. Stabbing. Yeah, yeah he could have been a time. game show host. He could have been one of those guys. He could have been. There's so much stuff that he could have done, but. Bob has a good point in the chat that I think we're missing, guys. Oh, um, here we go. His wife was a cheating slut. Uh, was she? Who says that? Yeah, the, the, oh, that guy was bringing back her sunglasses, John. You think that guy drove a couple blocks for some fucking sunglasses? They were divorced. They were a nice guy. They were divorced. She could bang, Come on. She could bang anybody think, she wanted. John, do you think she only had one pair of sunglasses? What kind of person? I have five pairs of sunglasses. And I love sunglasses. I take care of them. You know what happened? She was there. She gave this guy the eye. She, you know, she gave him the, the, she batted her eyelashes at him. She left her sunglasses there. He knew her. So he's like, okay, man, I'm going to go get some action. So he takes a sunglass, do, 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 goes over around 9 Did OJ cut his head off too, or just hers? Just hers. He, okay. um, I don't know. He what, just stabbed him. He just stabbed the shit out of him. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He had a cut on his hand. It is stabbing hand. I got cuts on my stabbing hand. Did Hulk Hogan almost age OJ his wife? Let me just say this. Hulk Hogan. What, do you, what does almost OJing your wife mean? You got mad at her? Yeah, he didn't stab her. He didn't almost, he, he didn't cut like a quarter of her head off. It was an attempted stabbing? Hulk Hogan's wife was banging one of a, a, a kid that mm-hmm. Brooke went to high school with. Based. Based well, I think I think he was fucking a gal that's her age too. I think both of them yeah. ended up with obscenely young people. And Hulk Hogan's dated a chick that actually looked like his ex-wife too, looked just like, like his ex-wife. Yeah, it looked like he traded. Weird. Yeah, he traded her in on a newer newer model. He really looked like that too. His ex-wife was smart enough to date a dude with hair because that would be kind of dumb to be like, "This is my new man," and bring him around, and he's got just the Caesar cut Hulk Hogan thing going on. Yeah. Where do we go next? All right. Oh, I have one. Go I, ahead. Because I, I there was a couple of things, and I since we're all older, we've been married or are currently married. I think this would be a fun. Do you guys have the thing that I I brought, Jody? I have that. Yes. I okay. Because oh, we need to get buffer. that in. That's important. It's very yes. important. Let me get that right now. Because everybody's want to is... make sure that we do the the whole thing. Well, first of all, this is like a oh moment. Mike. No, bringing... I have some important points to make. About okay. this. All right, here we go. Okay. 
the cheese tax, the cheese tax. You gotta pay the cheese tax every time you're cooking. When the cheese comes out, this puppy comes looking. The rules are the rules, and the facts are the facts. And when the cheese drawer opens, you gotta pay the tax. The, the cheese yeah. tax, the cheese tax. Hand it over quick, or things might get ugly. I can get really loud, I'm a really barky puppy. I'm not just asking, cause I'm looking for snacks. This is real important business, and you gotta pay the tax. The cheese tax, the cheese tax, the cheese tax. tax. The cheese tax. The cheese tax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the cheese tax. I right. believe in that. I'm gonna institute that shit at my house tomorrow. Guys, I lied. I lied. I don't have anything for it. I just, I just like it. <laughs> it makes me want cheese. You fucking every time that drawer opens, I think I should get a piece of cheese for sure. I've watched that like forty times today. I love it so much. I can't stand uh, a begging dog. Like in other words, every time you eat, the dog comes and sits right in front of you, and the drool starts coming out of its mouth. Yeah, that drives me insane. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Cats don't do that. Lily's thing is ice cubes. If you go to get ice cubes out of the fridge thing yep. if she hears the ice cube maker start going she shows up and she wants one and that's fine she can have ice cubes my daughter has a white lab and you can't throw a piece of a piece of food past that dog if that dog could throw to first base it would make millions of dollars as a shortstop in the in the major leagues <laughs> you like air bud they made a they made a dog baseball movie didn't they jody Yes. Airbud played baseball for sure, I'm sure. Played all the sports. Yeah, all of them. I remember one time I took six chicken nuggets and I tried to throw it past that dog. Got every one of them. God damn. Did you throw them one at a time or did you throw a buckshot? Because if you threw buckshot, that's fucking wild. One at a time. And you, look, I threw it to the left. I threw it to the right. Now, I didn't try to throw it to where the dog had to make a big leap. But I'll tell you what. I threw it pretty hard and the dog caught every Threw a of. fucking slider and caught his ass off guard a little. Wow. Yeah, my curveball isn't what it used My curb nugget isn't what it used to be. All right. I have another story. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is the story I want to know right now. Is this true or is this bullshit? This is a, I think these are two wedding planners. Oh, hang on. What's that? Hold please. So there was a, there was a whole lead into this, John. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. The wedding things was what I was going to get into. There's a one before this that was a little tamer. It was, uh, had to do with lace. Yeah, I was going to get into that. Uh, I wanted to do this one first, and I was going to back into that one. You think this one's better to do? Uh, I thought this was the closer. Well, all right. I'll do the first one. We want to do the lace one first or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's laugh at the freaks, and then we'll really fucking we'll send okay. it home. All right. Here we go. Because I definitely want to talk about the whole Brandon Pixie podcast fight. Because I okay, got This will be really quick because it will come around to it. Hey, Mike, you're married. I am. How long have you been married? Uh, 2017. So, so a bit five, eight, six, 10, 20, whatever years. Six Did you years. have a, uh, like a big, pretty wedding fancy in a church? No, Did you... no, we were a courthouse deal. Oh, you motherfuckers eloped, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, we, we had a party at the house afterwards, but yeah, no, we just, we just went and got it done. I did the same thing. I had a very small, like a dozen people at a park. We didn't pay for it because I'm cheap. We went over there. We took pic I paid for the photographer, and my buddy married us. But our wedding yeah. cost less than a hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been we've been together since 2002. Yeah. So we were together for 15 years. Just doing the formal thing. Yeah. Right. I'm an idiot. John, did you have the big the big showcase thing? Two hundred and twenty five oh, sure. people, thirty five thousand oh, dollars. Fuck your mother. How much? Thirty five thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. Open bar. Yep. Yep. That's why you're so mad. I get it now. <laughs> yep. If I had to pay for an open bar wedding in my fucking twenties or whenever you got married, I would still be pissed off about it today. Nineteen ninety seven. That's nineteen ninety seven money too, Mike. Do you yeah, hear that? Yeah. Thirty five thousand wow. dollars worth of ninety seven cash. That's like a half a million dollars, John. I had to sell stock to pay for this wedding. Stock. You think you're the fucking <laughs> prince of Jersey? I'm telling you. And to be honest with you. Did you have like a like an ice sculpture? There was seven bridesmaids and seven groomsmen. groomsmen Jesus groomsmen. Christ, John. You had seven friends? Seven, se oh. yes. <laughs> Way to go. My high five. High five me through the. Absolutely. Fucking... God damn it, Bob. Why are you so funny on this show, but not the Boomer Bunker? That's what I'd like to know. 
Start bringing some of this shit over to the Boomer Bunker. Doug's, yeah, we bring out the best of Bob. Yeah, Bob says Doug's going to marry John and I. John, I'm trying to think, like, if I needed to fill out seven groomsmen, if I even have seven friends. I had two. Two, and my best friend is the one that married us. So I'd have been running low on guests after the second one. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and then you have to have some guests, too. I had three cousins that are kind of like brothers. We grew up together. So there's three right there. Yeah. And then I had four, at least four. Four. Okay. Yeah. So listen. And that's I, a lot of fucking people, too. Okay. So look, this plays into my question a little bit. Okay. Were there any... The whole part of going through a big wedding, the anxiety part, is you got to make the fucking plans. You got to get the food, the dress, the tux, and guests, like family members who you're going to invite. You don't want to offend anybody, you know? You always offend somebody. So, did you have anybody in your invitation pool? Because I know obviously Mike didn't because it was they eloped right. and I fucking didn't have anybody. So it's like, was there anybody in your pool that you were like, oh, we can't invite Cousin Ernie because, you know, he likes to finger dogs. And stuff, and we don't want to leave him alone because the dog's bringing the ring down the car. You know, was there any weirdo or relative you were like, no. So what I did was I cut it off at, like, second cousins and stuff like that. We cut it off. We had 225 people. My wife had uh, six brothers, you know, she had six uh, kids, six brothers and sisters. And then, you know, their kids and stuff like that. And we didn't want kids' kids at the wedding, you know, and— so we had to cut it off at a certain point. Oh, there too. adults only wedding. Right. It was kind of like an adults Hell only. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, and here's the other thing. I didn't do shit. All I said was, is that what you want? Yeah. That's what, all I did was write checks, write sure. checks, write checks. And showed checks. up on the day it happened and, showed up and on tried the day. not to be drunk. Here's a funny thing. So the day that, the day that we were going to get married, my friends took me out to play golf, which was horrible because I'm terrible at playing golf. All I did was write, I rode around in the golf cart and I just got out and I took and hit balls as far as I could hit them. The day the of day, your wedding? The day, because we got I got married on a Friday. Haven't you ever seen a romantic comedy, John? You never go play golf on your fucking wedding day, bro. Well, I did. So then I come home, and I got to get a shower. And when I went in to get a shower, I think everything hit me that this is, you know, I'm going to get married. And I almost passed out in the shower. Like, I had to <laughs> sit down. I actually had to sit down and kind of do some breathing. So we get there. We get to the place, and uh, they're ready to go. And this place is like... There's a wedding at five. There's a wedding at six. There's a wedding at yeah, seven. Yeah. I mean, they this turn is and like burn. It's yeah, a wedding place. Airport. Wait, you you spent thirty five thousand dollars on a wedding and you had to be out in an hour. Well, where we got married, we got married at a place called I I call it the scene of the crime now, but what was it called? <laughs> uh, Steal your money? <laughs> no, it was uh, Czar Us? I think it was the oh, it was the Chapel in the Woods. That's what it was. Yeah, called. it was. It was in New Jersey. They were always just scamming people anyway. There was a big traffic jam, and my mother wasn't there yet. And they're like, "You just have to go. Your mom's just going to miss it." And I said, "Dude, I'll tell you what. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I'm not going. If I get married before my my mother's here, I'll never live it down. So I'm not going any. We're not going anywhere. We're, we're going to have to stand in line, John. No." No, I think they okay. had cleared everybody out. But then my mom came and we just went in and we did the whole thing. And then we went and then we had a trolley. It took all, we had a trolley and in the trolley was champagne and beer and booze and all. And that took us to the reception. Dude, there wasn't one. And then at the reception, everybody was you mean like reception. a trolley trolley, like a car, like a ding, 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 ding. And everybody. Yeah, we all were in the trolley almost. Yeah, because we didn't want to get limos. That was probably a solid 10, 15, huh? I don't remember, dude. I have no idea. Trolley seems like it would be expensive. So we go to the reception, and it was the fastest five hours of my entire life. I don't, I, it was a blur because you're just yeah. going around and seeing I think I danced like three times. I, I don't even remember what I ate. Everybody well, loved look. it. They thought the food was amazing. They had a great time. They got drunk off their ass. My one buddy was, he threw up for two days. I mean, it was. <laughs> Everybody has fun at your wedding except you. I've been to a few like goofy redneck weddings and shit like that where it's like, oh, beer can, you know, walk through tunnel and everybody got married on the front porch of this double wide trailer and hot dogs and beer for the reception, stuff like that. But like there's always a few people that don't get the invite. And I happen to put a few topics here that I'd like to talk about just interesting people that probably shouldn't have gotten invited to the weddings of these uh these two folks. All right, so this one guy and this was right, so let me just read this. While planning his wedding, one man faced a difficult decision about what 
is traditionally supposed to be the day surrounding the family and friends. He had to battle guilt and confusion about his choice. The groom decided to share his story on Reddit's True Off My... Oh, it's called Off My Chest. It's a subreddit. My parents say, if I avoid having things that eats at my... This I, I don't. It's I'm sorry. I should have read. You can this skip to the good part, John. You don't have to right, do the so whole thing. So what happened is this guy's brother. He couldn't have flowers or paper or lace. There couldn't He's be one any, of those guys. He, Mike, couldn't, he yeah. just eats stuff. They couldn't have any plants on the table for centerpieces because this dude eats things like that's his kinker. It's yeah. easier cleanup. Let him eat it. Damn, I never thought about that. Yeah, I mean, like, once everybody's come in and seen it, I mean, if he eats some flowers, so. Yeah, but again, I he I, was he worried that th this guy was just going to walk up on, behind the wife and start eating the lace off her veil? I, I mean, That I'm, was his, I'm sorry, that was his specific thing that I saw in the headline is he eats lace. Yeah. And I said, why would you invite that guy to a fucking wedding? That seems like the worst place for a person who eats lace to be. Or it would be like walking like Willy Wonka. As soon as he walked in there, he'd be like, ho oh. ho. So does he just World eat lace? Pure imagination. Or, or like he can't control himself. Like he sees lace and he has to consume it immediately. Because I mean, I go to a grocery store and I can buy groceries but like most of that is stuff that I would eat, but like I don't just like rip it open and eat it. You don't? There apparently is there's a TV show called My Strange Addiction, and it covers this kind of thing. Oh, uh, they never yeah. gave it a name, but basically it's that he likes to eat like rocks and soil and dirt. Did you see the one with the gal that uh, huffs a uh, uh, computer keyboard? Duster. Oh, no. that's that's an addiction. That should have been on. Uh, yeah, that was the best one. Intervention. That's a different different show. That lady's awesome. They have her picture up at the Office Depot. Listen. There's a bitch that eats mattresses. Really? There's a bitch that eats couches. <laughs> and you would say to yourself, she John, you would sit here. Listen, if I just told you today, like I ate a couch once, I'm sure you would have some serious questions. Sure. Mainly, like how long did that take? And did you really eat the whole couch, springs and all? This what bitch, part of it didn't you eat? How did you eat it? Did you just like pull stuff up and chew it? Or did you do something like, did you put a little oil on it? Did you mm -hmm. use some condiments? Did you need When salt? did you eat it? Did you just sit around eating it like popcorn while you're watching TV? Did you she have to... plucked out some stuffing, John, and ate it like a... Like, like popcorn? popcorn? Or cotton yeah. candy. Cotton candy. Cotton candy, for sure. Yeah. And so that's the kind of shit they show on that show. And then when she runs out of couch, she buys a new one. If this is my brother, I say, fine, we're putting him in a suit. We're going to tie his, we're going to put him in a straight jacket. We're going to put one of those uh, Silence of the Ma Lambs masks on him. And we're <laughs> wheeling him the fuck in there. And he can eat, we'll feed him regular food, but he's not eating anything. I'm not going to let this guy embarrass me. <laughs> Meanwhile, you wheel him in on a handcart. I'm not going to let this guy embarrass me at my wedding. It's always got to be one somebody at a wedding that does something stupid, like the uncle that gets too drunk and falls down when he's out dancing, or for sure the the uncle that sniffs your fucking your wife's sister's cousin's daughter or something. The one person that gets too drunk and throws up all over the table, you know that kind of shit. The guy that picks a fight with the karaoke DJ. Oh my god! He gets knocked the fuck out in the middle of the dance floor. In my other life, I used to be a mobile DJ. <laughs> um, so my, my name was John Jamingo, DJ at large. I used to do weddings and it was always some asshole that would come up and want you to play the dumbest songs. Oh, my favorite song is Afternoon Delight by whatever band that was. That's a fine song to play at a wedding. Is it really? <laughs> is it uh, really? It's fine. I mean, it's not any dumber than any yeah. other. You can play the Macarena again. Hey, can you play the song from Space Jam? That's my jam jam. I'm going to okay. sing that. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing was that as a DJ, when you used to play the Macarena, you had to get out in front of everybody because you wanted them up there. So you had to do the Macarena. So can you see a young, fresh-faced John Jamingo in a suit doing the Macarena and doing the electric slide? I don't know if I could, but I can tell you I'd like to. <laughs> Jamingo, Jamingo was doing the big Macarena. <laughs> the big Macarena. <laughs> 
that might that might be another show, that might be another show title. Man, the show titles here are unbelievable. Yeah. Man Brain says uh, there's a lady on the show that ate drywall. Yeah, okay. she was picking it apart. And that's a strange thing to just eat stuff. And the lace thing, like I said, that was a bad combination. But that's an example of, oh hey, maybe don't invite uh, cousin Tim because. You yeah. know, he's going to be munching on all the goddamn condiments and the tables, and we're going to have a hard time keeping up with him. And that guy's bitching that he can't get a date just because he's got a little extra flab on his tits. Imagine if there's an episode of My Strange Addiction of you eating drywall. But right. the reason I can't get a date is because it's not my drywall eating addiction. It's my man tits. Yeah, it's my man tits. Oh, speaking of tits, John, yes. uh, there was another story about the wedding. That you preloaded. Yeah, I preloaded that one. Okay, so here we go. Let me get back to that one again. Here it's called go. a segue, Mike. You like that shit? One bad. Hey, so here's the thing. When we do shitty segues, that's when you hear the music between the, the stories. This There will be music between these two stories right here. We used to have all of the uh, the segues from Lethal Weapon, like the, the cool-ass fuck saxophone? saxophone. Mike, why did you yeah. stop doing that? I loved it. I, I need to bring it back. I think I still have it on my board. Hey, but, uh, can you, you got a, something to take down a note for episode 500 or 600 or however many hundred you're working on? Put some fuck sacks in it. Pretty sure you got to do some fuck sacks. Who was that one woman that was, there's this one hot looking woman that used to play the saxophone all the time. She had like one hit. Uh, was that a uh, doo doo? Doo doo. Yeah, her. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I could watch her play the, the sax all day long. All right, so here we go. So here's two wedding planners talking about this one wedding. On two occasions, I've been told this story. I was not at this wedding, <laughs> but on two occasions, I've been told this, both by makeup artists. We'll call her Jenny. Jenny says to me, I did a wedding the other day, and you never guess what happened. She said the bride needs to go to the toilet just before the ceremony. This is like pre-ceremony. And she walked into the toilet, and what she saw is enough to end a wedding. <gasps> what do you think she saw? Was he with someone else? No, worse. Have a right, hang on. So yeah, so let's because Mike don't know the story. What do you think happened? Where the bride walked in, caught the husband in the bathroom doing something that she immediately wanted to end the wedding. A wedding ender, Mike. Was he eating shit? No. Hang on. That's a pretty good okay. one. That's Was good he one. doing an up upper decker? No. That's pretty good. Did it involve shit in some way? No. No shit. Okay. No, no. Was he molesting a child? No. Was it sexual in nature? Yes. I will, Some I might will say. I will say yes. Oh, shit. Was it sex with a man, midget? So it, it was sexual with another woman, or was it sexual with himself? Other woman. Oh, we're, All right, now remember, woman. Another uh, woman. Jody threw out a hint that about breasts. Okay. Ooh, okay. He threw a hint out there. So he was slapping, oh, he was titty fucking the waitress. He was sucking on toes. Close. He was sucking on tits. Performing cunnilingus? He was. Uh, yeah, was he sucking on pussy? <laughs> he was sucking on tits. Breast sucking tits. Breast sucking okay. tits. Okay, so all right, we know he's sucking Wait, on so tits. Wait, so what was he doing, John? He was sucking on someone's tits. Okay. All right, so Some now. Somebody's? Okay, so he's sucking on some It was her tits? mom. Her mom's tits. Oh, so that's her a grandma's one. tits. <laughs> so close. Her infant His daughter's. His mom's tits. His mom's tits. His mom was in the bathroom breastfeeding the groom before the wedding. <laughs> Worse. Getting whacked. <laughs> Work. I didn't even I say don't jerking know. off. Anything you don't end a wedding for sexual. catching your guy jerking off. But he was in there. The groom was in there. Doing drugs? <laughs> no. He was being breastfed by his mum. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, what? Why would you marry a man that's getting bitty? Well, like All right, so again, is that a true story? Do we believe that? No. How, how old's the guy? Like, in other words, you would imagine if he's getting married, he's got to be in his mid-20s. Let's go even early 20s. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I would like to just make a point of order because I know I watch a lot of, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I watch popular TV occasionally. Okay. I think this is a story that might've been conflated, conflated with uh, the Superman guy from the show called, God damn it. Mom. 
Mike, it's my Mike, last Mike. night as a bachelor. <laughs> no, Mike. The the, the one with the band superheroes on Amazon. After tonight, I'll have to suck someone else's tits. <laughs> Just give me one last suck, Mom. Oh, this is killing me, man. The boys. The boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he sucks the, on the, the ladies, the gal's tits. Yeah. And then he lasered her eyes out with his laser eyes. He did. Yeah. She's dead now. And now he can't suck on her tits because she's dead. Do you think he killed his mom when she caught him sucking on the titties? You'd have to if you if your wife to be walked in on your wedding day of you suckling your mom's tits. I assume you would have to kill your mom. What? Why would you? No, you you'd have to kill both of them. <laughs> you'd have to pick up your wife and beat your mom to death with her. <laughs> that way, probably no... just Benoit the whole fucking wedding, <laughs> uh, just in case. God, John, you would have needed so many bullets. I could have done it myself. Mike could have done that. <laughs> now you. Jody, with the way you shoot, I don't think there's enough ammunition for you to kill everybody at a wedding. Oh, I could have, I could have been like Arnold in Terminator with a fucking bag full of bullets, and I'm still, I'm gonna hit maybe two people, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I, I think it's bullshit. I don't think that the. But what if it did? You think out of all the things in the world, the craziness, there's not a chance that a, a bride to be walked in on him sucking his own mom's tits. Not that old. Maybe not breastfeeding. Okay. Not breastfeeding. That's silly. Like. Does she have a baby? Is she lactating? Like, there's a whole other there's, bunch of questions that come on. I can't this. invite what? my uncle because he'll eat all the lace uncontrollably. Uh -huh. But I call bullshit on a guy wanting to suck on uh, his mom's tits. Yeah, I, I that's yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I bet it's out there. Maybe. Okay. Mike, Mike, would you suck your mom's tits? Just gun to your like, head for fun? Oh, gun to my head. Yeah, sure. No, oh, gun to my yeah, head. I don't, I don't. I don't want to get shot in the head. No, nah, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I would suck on my mom's tits if I had a gun to my head. Of course I would. And yeah. she's dead. I dig her up and suck on her tits. <laughs> Try to get shot. God, I don't want to die. Yeah. Poor mom. <laughs> Jody, you're getting shot in the head again. <laughs> I, I might get shot in the head again. My mom's got big fat titties, and it's gonna be weird. Ugh. <sighs> Not like hot lady titties. My mom is like a bull dyke lesbian. So I just, just vicious tits. I don't want none of that. No, mm, I'd, yeah. I'd rather get shot again. Yeah. And, and your mom's had somebody that knows her way around titties. You know, they have yeah. the, they have the package. So they know how to deal with the package. So you got Jesus. that going on too. All right. So listen, before we wrap things up, one thing that I love is I love me some podcast drama between some podcasters. I mean, beef. If, if yeah, a podcast beef, if you've got one podcast beefing with another, I'll listen to both of them. So they go back and forth. I, I don't know what it is about me. Maybe it's a character flaw, whatever it is. I'm there for it. No, it's like watching our shows. These are our version of daytime television bullshit. Okay. Soap operas. So Jody sent me some audio from a Twitter space from Pixie, who is on uh, her podcast is next up next up. I'm sure. Next on stage ne one. Next on stage one. That's her. She. It's about nightlife and the adult entertainment industry, John. Okay. It's her it's and Mr. It's J. It's Denver's top, Denver's number one nightlife entertainment podcast. They're both former strippers, and they talk about the adult industry. They do. And then Brandon from Shitty Song of the Week, he stopped into the uh, Twitter space and uh, it kind of started out okay. I was into it. And this is Brandon. This, let's just give you, it's only 38 seconds. I'm trying to find something special. Like, I feel like people who start podcasts, they either start their podcast too early or they have unrealistic expectations for their shows. And when you set unrealistic expectations from the beginning, you get that burnout much faster because you're like, oh, well, we only got three episodes out. Let's put out a Patreon. And you realize, oh shit, no one's going to your Patreon and you're wasting all this time putting out bonus content and all this. And that, that's where I see the burnout settling in. So I, I feel like that can all be avoided with proper preparation and planning before you even get on the mic. Gentlemen, that's, that's solid there. So, pretty solid factual. Yeah. 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 Okay. So here's a clip to uh, Brandon. I like fish and I would call him a complete fucking liar if he was lying. That's, Probably some of the most solid advice I've ever heard about podcasting. It's not all glitz and glamour and don't get carried away. No, I mean, he's saying that, you know, get a bit 
into it before you start trying to, uh, you know, set the world on fire and monetize and make bonus shit for nobody. Podcasts are not like baseball fields. If you build it, they will come. That doesn't happen in <laughs> podcasting. All right. No, yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. So Brandon, he rages on about independent podcasts as he brags about his own independent podcast. Here we go. There's millions of shows out there, millions of them. It, it's all the same shit. People, you know, they get the same two, three group uh, group of friends together, and they, our conversations are fine. I think we should record this and put it on the internet. No one wants to hear your shows about nothing. Find a niche for your show. Like find a demographics. Find something that makes you stand out from all the other people. Like, yes, we're a music review show, but we're a music review competition show that looks at terrible music. Try to find something like that on the internet. I challenge you. You're not going to find it. It's not there. Okay. Well, I heard, heard a little bit there, Brandon, but okay. All yeah, right. I felt that. But then again, I say, Brandon, why do you think there's no other shows out there that take uh, shitty music and play it as a competition show? It's a fair point. Nobody wants to fucking listen to shitty music. Why would we <laughs> want to listen to fucking shitty music? I feel like we've told him that before in the very beginning. That it's just kind of like you're daring people to listen to this when you listen to... Yeah, the conceit of the show is basically, this sucks, you shouldn't listen to it. I dare you to listen to shitty song of the week. I believe their intro says, why are you listening to shitty song of the week? <laughs> I still show up every week, man. Now, listen, Red has been on this show and I like Red and I don't know Brandon. And I really never listened to shitty song of the week, but I made myself go listen to like three or four episodes. Yeah. And the thing about shitty song of the week, Red sounds good. The guest sounds good. The music, I don't know where they're playing the music from, but it's hard to hear and it's off. And then the other thing is Brandon sounds the worst. He talks the most and sounds the worst. I don't know what he's using. It sounds like he has a gaming headset on and not a good one. I think he, he might be using a gaming headset. I'm kidding. He's using headphones. Okay. So I don't know what it is. But he he sounds better. Well, I did a lot of work on these phone on these on this Twitter space audio just so you could yeah, hear. But the it, Twitter space audio isn't the audio of the podcast. That's no. Off a phone. All right, yeah. But I'm just okay. telling you right now, even the Twitter space audio when I didn't touch it sounded better than Brandon on his microphone. Again. Damn. I'm Okay? Wow. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not talking about the content. I'm not talking about anything else. I'm just talking about audio quality. We know why. Listen, now, you guys jo are being Joey, lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm not an audio expert, but their show doesn't sound bad, does it? He's not wrong. And the reason I know this is only okay. because okay. I know okay. what, what StreamYard audio sounds like versus yeah. a married audio track. They did married audio tracks for a while. It's a pain in the ass because they use music clips. They have to cut all that in afterwards and it takes longer to edit. Oh, okay. you know, really? You, do you think so? Yeah, I know. I do it. I do it every day. I do it like I'm, with here. I do it. Yes, I know. I know you know that. I'm telling yeah, Mike. Right. And, and Red's in. And listen, Red, I listened to the show and I enjoyed some of the shows. You did the one with... Um, Man of War, I think it was, versus David Lee Roth, and I, I was into it. Okay, so damn, I forgot Red was here. You got me talking shit in front I know, of I'm Red. Talking, listen, <laughs> you know what, Red? Red, you guys, you guys, you've gotten lazy, and I get it. It sucks to produce stuff. I'm not calling you lazy because it takes me eight months to put out a podcast, but the streamer audio sounds like dog shit. Look, I'm <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you guys. I I like Red. Okay, and I don't know Brandon, and I thought the show has promise, but it's a little bit lazy, and I think we. You know, and he's on here and he's talking to Pixie and he's, you know, like he's some kind of expert and everything. So now we get into clip three where Brandon wants to know why. Why is it is Pixie burned out? And can I ask you something, Pixie? I heard you say that you were currently in the middle of a year long burnout, as it were. So oh, why gosh. You, oh, gosh. So <laughs> why, why do you think you should be? preaching the gospel about podcasting advice to these people. This is like the audio equivalent of like those retweet groups that I see. All right. So let's get retweet groups. Uh, now, John, for a little context for people who don't pay attention to uh, the uh, weekly uh, po project podcast space, she picks a couple of topics and does like a space about topics. And she does podcast burnout a lot. Like, this is like the sixth or seventh time that she's done podcast burnout. And she, you know, asked people, hey, are you all burnt out on doing your podcast? And, you know, yeah. are you tired Joey, of doing that thing that you enjoy? Yeah. 
I, no. I, uh, I, I don't get burnt out on podcasting. I, I enjoy it a lot. That's why I do it. Hey, Mike, can I say something to you real quick? What? I just saw you twisting your mic cable around your finger, and I do the exact same thing. I don't usually. I don't know why I'm doing that. Oh, I'm doing it subliminally through the computer because I'm literally okay. down here. You can't yeah. see it, but I've been doing it the whole fucking time. <laughs> we got the same kind of autism, dude. That's but no, nice. she, uh, yeah, she, she is burnt out on doing the podcast. But, but what's the real reason, John? See, that's it. She was sitting here and she was trying to figure out why she was burnt out on podcasting. And I got to hand it to Brandon. And I want to um, listen. I got to hand it to Brandon. Brandon basically got her to. Figure out. He wasn't even a dick about it. He just asked a simple no, fucking I, I question. No, I don't think that he was particularly, like, mean or no, anything. right? And she answers. This is her answer. I'm yes. not preaching the gospel. I'm just getting a whole bunch of people together that are podcasters, that, that have their own opinion. All right, I got to stop. All right, so now that noise in the background... It's fucking Brandon. I don't know what he's doing, but take... Hold on. Turn your fucking mic. Mute your mic while someone else is talking. Yeah, that's... See, Mike knows. Be a little bit considerate. Turn your fucking phone Jimmy, off. Go. go ahead. Before he started that conversation, he said, I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm pushing my child in their handicap swing or whatever the fuck he said. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. It's not handicap. I, that's a wrong word. Therapy, I thought he therapy was swing. Therapy swing. Okay, first of all, Fine. If there's noise when he's talking, I don't have a problem with it. He's he was not probably saying a pacing too word. because he Listen, knew stop. John. He knew he was reeling her in, dude. Stop, <laughs> stop sticking up for him. You take and you hit the little button on your phone that mutes it so you can hear her. You don't have to hear him, you know, fingering whatever he's fingering in the back. Said topic. So uh, I to feel that. like I'm the Pause. project. One more thing. One more thing. And Mike can attest to this. Brandon has listened to the spaces many times, but he uses his computer. One of the things about this fucking stupid Twitter spaces thing is you can't use your computer and use your microphone yeah. to make conversations. You got to use your cell phone. I'm going to tell you something right now, too, that Brandon, I noticed. Brandon has never. This is his first time doing a Twitter spaces. So maybe he didn't know that. OK, it, there's a big fucking button in there that says mute. So don't tell there's me he doesn't know. That says mute. All right. There's a button there. I've been on Twitter spaces. I know I've been there. There's a button that says mute. You mute your fucking button. You mute your audio so you don't have to hear this shit. You, you can't hear yourself, though, John. You, usually we have headphones on so we can hear ourselves. There's a, it you says, don't know what they're hearing. It says mute right on the button. You say mute right on your fucking button, so John. I'm just telling you, it, it's, it's disrespectful. Well, to defend Brandon, <laughs> for this being his first spaces, I'd say he knocked it out of God. the park, Jody. I think he should just quit spaces altogether. He should never do another one. Y you batted a thousand, Brandon. Retire. <laughs> That's what happened. Your first at bat. We'll raise you your jersey up. in the Spaces Hall of Fame. I, you're getting ahead. Shush. All right. So she's here. Project she podcast with Pixie. It's more of a community based for podcasters. When I get online and I and I fucking doom fucking scroll and I'm I'm here, I see things and then I just want to talk about them. Realistically, this space, because I'm a, I'm a narcissist, I love fucking talking to people. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not preaching. Whoop, sorry. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. So now we have- She's the, doing the Tony Robbins thing where she adds fuckings. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I'm, I'm going to count. I'm going to count the fuckings. Do you, we should have a bell. I, I can't do both. I can't bell and, and do the other one. Okay. So now, that, now the uh, White Knights- are all upset because now Pixie's getting upset. So we have the guy from the 80s movie podcast. Oh, that's Ed. His mom got fucked by the dude who wrote the original God of 60 Seconds. <laughs> that's just a fun fact that's, that's about Ed. That's a nice Ed. little backstory. Now here, let's talk about uh, this guy. Here, so here's And he does old. an 80s movie podcast, yeah, Jody. Now, this is a podcaster. We call Pixie the fairy pod mother, not because she's a podcasting guru. It's because she is a... All right. Now, I don't know if you heard that, but you can hear Brandon in the background go when he says. Was that him? He blew a raspberry? <laughs> this is Brandon blowing a Brandon raspberry. Brandon is fucking cold blooded, dude. There he goes. Fairy pod mother, not because she's a podcasting guru, it's because she is a. <laughs> I never heard that before. Good catch. Uh, now, here's the thing. 
I had I to do too. all kinds of audio. I had to take and do all kinds of processing just to get you to hear this. Because if you hear the original audio, and Mike, we were doing this earlier, this is this guy. The reason they call him the is because he said it was a governor. Now, Mike, what do you think? Would you think that maybe that when puppets get together and do something with the puckers? Pixie, I don't know why this guy's being so mean to you. <laughs> I think oh. you're great. And, and then Joe Biden showed up, John Go. Pixie. You know, I can't say, uh, I like Pixie, listening to podcasts tell me when about I see. podcasting. Yeah, I, uh, I get some uh, cornflakes and uh, a little podcast, and, and uh, Jill lets me breastfeed while I sleep. Uh, you know, nobody's got tits like Jill, I'll tell you that right now. All right, so here we go. Here's the 80s guy. To bring together a diverse group of people with different backgrounds and different experiences coming together to talk about this thing that we all have in common. And she's trying to learn. That guy's in a bathroom stall. I, I don't know where he's at. No, he's at work in a bathroom stall. Listen, oh, he to, listen it. to it. Yeah, hey, you're right. He went back to work and heard Brandon come in, and he was like, well, I got to go say something. So he That went dude in there is to sitting shit. on a toilet at work. You might be right. In a bath. How, what else sounds like that, John? Here we go. Yeah, hang on. Different backgrounds and different experiences coming together to talk about this thing that we all have in common. That is bathroom stall if I've ever heard it. The only thing life. that's missing is a toilet flush. That is the only thing that is missing. There's a guy in the stall next to him going, what is this fucking guy talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Different experiences with podcasting. I'm trying to take a shit, man. Listen, I came in here to do a little wank, like a little mid-work yank. And that this guy's in here talking podcast. I can't even get hard anymore. What is this pot fairy pod mother shit? Yeah. What's this? What's he talking about? Can I wash my hands? Is this guy on a business call? <laughs> so so then Pixie decides she's going to defend her podcast. I feel like having conversations like this, it matters. I don't have to know everything about the subject to talk about. Fucking Brandon with that fucking noise in the background. Like, I can't stand him. <laughs> So at one doing? point, I'm going to be honest with you, John, like the third or fourth time I listened to this, I thought, because we talked behind the scenes and I was like, this is what you should do. You kind of, you should do it this way. He didn't do what I said. He went rogue. And I'm wondering if he's actually just walking around his house, hitting things just to be a cunt. Like that would also. You know something? No, he didn't do this on purpose. This I'm going to have to ask him. No, I want confirmation. I don't think he did it on purpose. If he like says he did it on purpose, he's lying. Yeah, I agree with Mike. It. I don't know. Mike, do you believe how we're bonding here? Uh, yeah, we're getting I'm, along great, John. I'm having a man crush. We have we to should make start money a to, to have an opinion about things. <laughs> In my mind, my main podcast is successful. All right, so main podcast is successful. You have a successful podcast in your mind? All right. So By yeah. her definition of success, she's successful. Right. I, great. I like that. That's great. Okay. Good, right? You're successful. Yeah. What right. are you mad about? Buckle in, everybody, because Brandon is about ready to break Pixie. It's horrifying, mesmerizing, yeah. and amazing. And we finally figure out why Pixie is... Guys, I would like to preface this by saying this made me feel very uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I felt dirty after this, and I wasn't even involved. This is like when you like you you send your buddy in to play around like, oh, he's going to come in and scare everybody. Then he's up shooting one of your friends yeah. at the end of it. Like this was a this is like inviting your uncle and he starts eating all the lace. Now, Duchess is like, this is taking too long. And I, I understand I got the setup. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. The, the, what he's trying to say is this is going to feel like sucking on your own mother's tits. That's the feeling you're about yeah, to get. Duchess is asking if we're done with this bit. She doesn't understand that this is this is important to us. Th this, this is, is the bit. And this <laughs> is why we saved it till last. Because we did the rest of the show, and this is for us. This part of the show is for the three of us, okay? <laughs> this I, I know you're it was supposed to be for the audience, and we did. We did like a minute, an hour yeah, we're and We're going long. This is after show. Yeah. Go away, you fucks. Yeah, we, we did. Listen, we yeah. did. You don't know any of the players. This, Nothing. But believe me, Duchess. The payoff is worth it. Right. Yep. And remember, you didn't know me before donut, 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 fat, fat, fat. Right. This this is a donut, 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 fat, fat, fat level 
outburst, okay. I would say. I will stop it if Jody says stop it, but I, I want to let it roll because it's got to build up. Because No, just let it play, man. Here we go. Yeah. Where are you experiencing the burnout from? If you're satisfied with the show that you are currently making and you're happy with the numbers that you have and the support and the fan base that you've created around your show, then where does the burnout come from? My personal burnout comes from... <laughs> It comes from the background that you guys don't see. <laughs> and I can't. Go ahead. We were listening to this live when this happened. I knew Brandon went on. I heard it. Mike was there, too. Jody, I was sitting at a picnic table. Uh, I, I was about to have to go. <laughs> no, I was sitting at a picnic table at work. Uh, I had gone to lunch and come back, and I was about to like have to go back in. Yep. To go back to work. I was delivering tires. Like I was in and out of the truck when he was on. And I was like, I gotta hurry up. I threw some tires and some people in a thing. Yeah. And I just signed their name and jumped back in. I was like, shit is getting so, real. What's happening? Yeah. I, I was sitting at a picnic table listening to it. And like I could see my boss at the smoke shack smoking a cigarette, looking right at me and probably thinking he should be back at work. Did you have your phone up to your ear like this, like a jack? No, I was listening listen on earbuds. Oh, okay. uh, nice. So I just looked like a doofus sitting there, staring off into space, Pondering. sitting at a picnic table by myself. Yeah, this was a lot longer. I cut a lot of this out. I mean, I had, I did a lot of editing on this. So here we go. So she's she's starting to well up. She's getting ready. And I said it as soon as he asked the question, and she started like she took that breath. I typed in this chat that well, I was I said, oh no. This is not going the way it was supposed to. She's about to cry. <laughs> I can explain it, and I'm not going to. Oh, yeah, you but are. It is affecting every single part of my podcast. And it's hard to explain because there's not enough hours in the day to explain it to people. You also don't have to explain it either. Shut up, Mike, or whatever your name is. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Who the fuck are you talking about? She's about ready to spill, and you say she doesn't have to talk. Shut up! <laughs> you seriously don't have Pixie. Well, I, I feel I like she should explain it. She's she's no, she's no, 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 so All if, you, right, if you're trying to connect with people, then maybe it makes sense to share your experience. Let me experience explain it to you guys. Let me explain it to you exactly. I am a fucking stripper. My husband cheated on me last year with fucking hookers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hookers. Multiple fucking hookers. And being a stripper, being an adult inner fucking tainer, not being able to be. Say it. It's so fucking hard. Do not fucking burn out. Not to fucking tear shit fucking apart. That was last year. Yeah, that's right, Lisa. That Apologize. Every so, fucking thing about me. And so, you come in here fucking, oh, um, I don't give a fuck. Guys, I ran out of fingers. Somebody else count. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's where I cut it off at because that's where they kicked Brandon out of the spaces. They kicked him the fuck out. And that was Oops. end scene. So the reason <laughs> she's been in a funk. The reason that I'm. Hold on. I, I do the reason that I'm in a funk is I'm a stripper and my husband fucked hookers. Hookers! I should be. I can't keep my husband from fucking picking up hookers. What Multiple kind of fucking hookers. This is terrible, is, guys. We should all be ashamed of ourselves. I know. This poor yeah, woman. Sure. The, but, but the thing is, like, I didn't do it. Fish did it. He's an asshole. First Fish didn't even do it. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he Fish did. Fish asked why she doesn't want a podcast. Right. She needed to get that off her chest. She and that's did. why I said, at the end of the day, I said, you should, she should say thank you. Because obviously she's been carrying that yeah, around. She had that on her chest for a bit. I'm proud of her. Look, have a real fucking moment. That's what makes us believe that you're here to have do what we do. Not that you're just here to have people fawn over you and your fucking gym selfies. So here's the thing. Now, this makes a lot of sense because all of a sudden we started seeing a lot of pictures of Pixie at the gym, at the yeah. gym working out. So I don't know if maybe Pixie put on some pounds after she got off the pole because I thought she was a bartender. And I'm not, listen, I'm not fat. Look, for me, I'm definitely not fat shaming. And I'll, I'm going to be quite honest with you. I think Pixie's cute. 
She's she's fine. She's she's an older chick. Whatever. The problem is she spends too much time. If she spent a little less time on Twitter Spaces <laughs> and a little more time talking to her husband. Well, guys, we're we're speculating. We don't know what the reasons are, but she does spend a lot of time on Twitter Spaces. I'm God damn it! I know the next time I see her doing a Twitter Space, I got to find out if she's with her husband anymore. I mean, I'm going to be story, honest. If I if the options were pay a woman to have sex with me. Or listen to her tell me about her podcast stuff while I'm trying to bang her. Like, I'm probably just going to pay the money and deal with no talkie. Well, again. No talkie. I forget where I heard this from, but they say you don't pay hookers to have sex. You pay hookers to leave and shut your mouth. So basically, (laughs) that's why you pay hookers. Because they come in, they do a job, and they leave, and you don't see them anymore. Utility players. Exactly. Right. Multiple fucking hookers. Yeah, multiple fucking hookers, John. Yeah. So thank you for indulging three podcasters who just listened to that and just, I couldn't believe it because Jody says, you got to listen to this. I'm driving home, right? So I put it on and I can't hear it. I'm turning it up and I'm motherfucking everybody because of the noise and they can't get to a fucking point. And because this went on for like 10 or 15 minutes, you know, and then when she screamed out, my husband cheated on me with hookers. Hackers! I was like, holy shit. Oh. Where did, I didn't see that one coming. Well, it came out of nowhere, John. Dad. Here's the thing. Guys, as professionals, semi-professionals, and just people who have been doing broadcast and podcast-related shit for a very long time, when somebody asks you a question and it gets too close to the real answer, you just go, yeah, I don't know. You <sighs> deflect. Like, she didn't have to say any of that. I, oh, she got, really did. She could have made something up. She could have just completely changed the fucking subject. She could have just kicked him out. She could have just said, I don't really like podcasting all that much. My, my, yeah. Listen, my uh, evil Australian menaces, Dave, says, that was amazing. Thank you for brightening my day. Listen, Dave is my daddy dom and my Sith Lord. I think that probably gave him a boner. He probably did. I think he might actually might have shot, a, uh, shot some goo on his TV set over that one. Hey, I sent you a thing in your uh, Discord DM. Yeah, see, I have to turn my phone off so I don't get phone calls, so I can't see it until after we get done here. So, But that's okay. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to wrap this up here. Mike, I'll tell you what, it's been a pleasure. I'd love to have you back on again. You're a lot of John, fun. John, cut out all that pixie stuff. It, it, it goes on too long. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I would cut. I would cut the rest of the. Sh- I would cut out other segments before I cut out that pixie shit. Okay. Sometimes you got to do stuff for yourself, yeah. so, so you don't get podcast burnout. Yeah, you don't want to burn out. You, you gotta. You gotta do one for you every now and then. Segments like that stops my burnout. You know, listen, Mike. Thank you so much for coming on. You were thanks for a having fabulous me. guest. Uh, I, this is. It was too long coming, and uh, would love to have you back anytime you want to come on. It, it would be amazing. Tell everybody where let's get some plugs out here. Uh, WFODshow.com. That's our website. And just search for WFOD on all the podcast players. We're on there. Uh, 600 episode 600 is coming out Monday. So. God, Wild, that's right? a lot, man. 600 episodes. Mike, can I ask you, have you ever had any problems with burnout? <laughs> Not really. No, I, I uh, wanted to murder one of my co-hosts. Which at- one drunk or Travis N- Napier. Oh. Uh, but but I, I mean, we did the show the next week just without him. I I just enjoy doing it. I look forward to it. So that was an interesting, John. You like this kind of conflict and stuff. And yeah. I haven't done a lot of podcast. I've done no podcasting live and in person. Napier was a co-host from WFOD from before who would do it live. Like he came over to Mike's house with drunk to do the show. Yeah. Well, see, here's and the thing. The about- night that he decided he was done with the show, he decided he was going to tank it. He just started screaming the N word. Oh, my God. And then Mike, like, Mike got wound up. <laughs> and there's this, there's a moment where he's just pissed. And you could tell. And- well, I was already wound up, Jody. Uh, you were pissed. He, and it- he started yelling out the N word to try to distract me from already being the passion mad. the passion and the anger john it was on the same level we'll have to get the clip i'll show it to you but like napier is just like and it's on seven and and mike goes oh well that's just what we're gonna do now you motherfucker we're just gonna say the n-word he's like yeah i said it mike and i'll fucking say it again <laughs> it's what you so call a european underpants guys 
Welcome to Walmart, N-word. So... <laughs> It's an epic episode of we're wrapping up. Yeah, we are. Listen, we don't know how to end things around here. That's one. Yes. That's one of our problems. John, tell everybody where to find your stuff. Boomer Bunker, Brand X, and you're listening to Rubberneckers. And uh, and listen, the one thing about podcasting, it's like fishing and hunting. Once you get the fish in the boat, once you pull the trigger and kill something, the fun is over. The rest of it's all work, and we know that. But we still love it. We still love giving you a show. Jody, take us out of here. Uh. You can Google search Po' Boys Podcast. Find my shit at Po' Boy Pod on Twitter. Go to ArizonaBayCoffee.com. Buy yourself a pound of gun barrel butt sex. <laughs> it's the latest creation from Po' Boys, Inc. It's a special blend of hazelnut flavored coffee you can purchase online. And it's like a shotgun blast from your brain to your colon. Isn't Arizona landlocked? It's a joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's from a Tool song. That's what I made fun of him. I was like, oh, you're pretty gay because you made the thing after a Tool song. I get it. I, I can't believe you have your own coffee, Jody. You've made it. I have, my, I have my own blend. And if you really want to get exotic, Delvin Cox of the Delvin Cox Experience has a blend himself, Big Black Cox. I think you should mix them together because I don't think many things would go together better than Big Black Cox and Gun Barrel Butt Sacks. Okay. We're going to leave it there. Everybody, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.